Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yeah, finally I'm continuing my 7410 uh, playlist series that I started a long, long time ago. I only started in part two, and I've been getting a lot of requests to continue or asking like, when are you gonna, when are you gonna continue this playlist? What's going on? So I finally took some time, rebuilt my infrastructure, my virtualization, and uh, it's up and running. So today I'm actually doing part three. I have a bunch of notes. As always, uh, these notes are going to be placed at my blog site as well. At my blog site, I'm going to have a nice course civilis of the breakdown of what's going to happen on the next episode so you guys can have a, uh, a good understanding of what's going to happen next week or the following week because I'm going to try to get this out for you guys as soon as possible. Uh, as always, I have my notes like I showed you a little couple seconds ago because I can't remember all this stuff. I'm getting old. <laughs> so these notes are going to be placed at the blog site and hopefully if I remember I'm going to put the link at the bottom of the description so you guys can check out and get those links. So uh, today is all about configuring the server core. All right, uh, we are so used to configuring the GUI, the graphical user interface, but Server 2012 is mainly for server core, no GUI, just doing PowerShell and command prompt. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I have my virtual machine. Let's do a control alt delete. I'm going to send a control alt delete again. I always do everything uh, within uh, VMware. So let's log in into the machine. When you first log in into your server 2012, um, got a licensing thing because I'm only using it for a demo. Uh, but when you log in f within your core environment, you're going to get a command prompt. A lot of you, when you see this, you're pretty scarce and you don't want to play around with it. But if you are working in a company that's going to be implementing or already using server core, uh, you need to get yourself used to this. So the first thing that you need to do is, I will run a IP config, all right? An IP config will give you a rundown of the machine's IP address and all that stuff. Uh, right now, the virtual machine is has a prefer IP, which is a static IP. Uh, I'm gonna grab my trusty little pen, Sue, and I'm gonna write that down because I want this to be a static IP address. Right, that's what we want. We want a static IP address. Um, next thing that you want to do is we need to assign a static IP address, right? So I got the information that I need, and I'm going to clear this out. And to to assign a static IP address, you need to get the index or the actual name of the Ethernet port. To do that, you want to do a net sh uh, interface uh, space IP4 because that's what I'm using. Show interfaces. Hit enter. If everything goes well, it depends on your hardware. Uh, if you have a like a physical server that has multiple NIC cards, you're going to see all your NIC cards here. But as you can see, the one that I need is index 12, and the name of it is Ethernet. So the way that you assign a static IP address is by this command. So we want net sh uh, interface space IP4 because that's the one that we're setting right and we have to do the set uh, parameter we need to give it an address the name of the address is the same thing as that I don't think it's case sensitive so I'm just gonna write it the same way that I see it over here so it's gonna be Ethernet space the source uh, source is gonna be equal to a static static uh, the address, this is where you assign the address. Again, I wrote down 192, 168, 129, 142. So what I'm going to do is let's go uh, 192, 168, 129, 143, right? Uh, let's give it, let's go 45. I'm going to hit space. Then we hit, we need to give it the mask. The mask by default is 255, 255. Really depends on your infrastructure. But for me, I'm using uh, 255, 255, 255, right? Uh, actually, make sure you spell it right because if not, you will have issues. And the last thing that you need to do is your gateway. And I believe my gateway is 192.168.129.2. Uh, yeah, it's my gateway, right? Yep, that's my gateway, and we're gonna hit enter. Awesome. So now we're gonna do an IP config. 
slash let's do icon p fig yep 192 awesome so it's set with the static ip that's great uh next thing that you need to do is assign a dns server right uh my dns server is going to be my domain controller uh because once you configure the server core you want to add it into a domain controller right so this one right here is actually 89 so that's my my dns so I am going to go in here and let's assign a DNS. So I'm actually going to do a CLS to clear it out. And the command for that is net sh int. Int is short for interf uh, interface. So that's like a shortcut. So if you don't want to write the entire word, uh, IP4, because that's the one that we're going to be assigning the DNS to. Uh, we're going to do an add parameter and uh, the attribute is DNS, DNS server. Uh, name, give the name, oh, got to spell it right, equals to Ethernet. I'm going to write it the same way I wrote it on the last command. And give it the address. The address will be 192.168.129, and I think 189 was my DNS server. And the index, the index is basically, you have to tell it what is your, this is, if I give it an index of 1, you're basically telling the server, okay, this is my primary DNS, right? Uh, if you give it an index 2, that's my secondary. But I'm going to give it a 1 because that's what I want my DNS to be. Uh, I'm going to do an IP config all to make sure everything is all right. And as you can see, our DNS server is pointing to 189. Our IP address is 145 as we assign it. And that's awesome, right? So... Right now, we already provided a static IP address to our server. Uh, the next thing is computer name, right? When you get yourself uh, a server is up and running, right? Once you get your machine up and running, you want to change the name of it because by default, Windows gives you this gibberish kind of name. Uh, there's actually three ways to get the name of the computer. Again, all this information is going to be provided for you. One way is do if, if you do uh, IP config all. And as you can see, the host name is like win blah, 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 right? Uh, another way is if you do set. And I believe if you would go all the way in the bottom, it shows you right here like user domain. So, yeah, it gives you the name. And a simple way, which I like to use, is basically host name. Uh, if you just type in host name, it would give you the actual name of the computer, right? Now, how to rename it within the server core? Now, it's a little tricky, and it's really easy in a way, because, again, I'm going to put all these notes at my blog site so you guys can get this stuff so you don't have to remember. Uh, so the command is actually net dom, and the attributes is rename computer. And I'm going to give it a Windows uh, NT attribute. Now, this attribute is percent computer name. And the reason why I'm using this is because I don't remember that long name. So you're basically telling this command, you're telling the computer, okay, I want you to take the name that's already assigned to this server, right? That win dash blah, 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 and I want you to change it to this. Now, if you are great with memorizing and you remember that win blah, cha, 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 you're, you're good to go. But if you don't, you can, you can actually use this attribute of percent computer name percent and space uh, four slash and you want to do new name and you're gonna colon and let's give it a name so I'm gonna go BJ dash uh, what is it what, what I call my virtual machine core so let's give it core Ooh. space uh, slash user D administrator administrator Administrator, <laughs> user ID would be administrator space uh, password password D. This is kind of strange because I'm I don't know why they would use password D. Eh, it's weird. Uh, hit a space and then you want to do a reboot command because once you w reboot of zero, uh, if you've done configurations and rename your uh, computer name on a server core. Not a server code, but a server GUI interface. When you change the name, what's when you press OK and you want to confirm it, what does Windows normally do? It wants you to reboot, right? So that's why I'm sending that command to reboot. We hit enter. 
uh, is basically uh, certain services such as blah 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 it's gonna be fixed blah blah you just hit yes to proceed to change and it's restarting and that's it that's how we change okay and we're back and uh, it finally rebooted so I'm gonna send a control alt delete command and let's log into our core server and again we assign a static IP we set a primary DNS server IP address to point to my domain I'm still getting this because I haven't licensed and yet but you know again this is a testing environment this is not actual uh, production uh, server and uh, we assign IP address we gave it a static IP DNS is pointing to my DNS server so that's great so when I add it to the domain we're good to go uh, what else we changed the name so actually we reboot it because of the change name so I'm gonna do a, a host name command to actually see if it changed BJ core awesome else awesome that's awesome right uh, next thing that we need next thing that it's on my notes is add to the domain so you gave it a static IP you did the DNS you changed the name uh, what's next you need to add it to the domain right so I'm actually have a Windows Server 2012 domain uh, which is right here uh, nothing special by default it goes inside the computer's organizational unit uh, container uh, again I don't have anything in here so it's no smoking mirrors so let's add this bad boy into our domain so the way that you do it and I'm gonna try to expand my command prompt a little bit for you guys uh, let's give it to with give it a little bit uh, there you go I like that there it goes. Expand it. Just expand it a little bit for you guys. Uh, so the command to add it to a domain would be to, uh, net dom. You want to do a join. And again, I am going to use the percent computer name, even though my computer name is extremely short. But you know, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, and then we would do a slash domain colon the name of the domain that we're going to be entering. Mine's is bjtech.com edu space uh, user d and it's going to be administrator awesome space password go and okay and then I'm going to send a reboot five I want a five second reboot and we're gonna hit enter. Uh, is the username or password is incorrect? The command failed to complete successfully. Uh, I'm gonna see. So if I do, what happens if I just cross this out? All right. So that means I do have to enter the password. Okay. So I'm gonna enter the password. Let me see if I remember the password. Uh, you would think that it would ask for the password, right? So let's do that. And did I spell it right? I'm just gonna hit enter. All right, it went through. Awesome. <laughs> uh, did give it a reboot, and it's rebooting right now. It looks like you do have to provide the password with the attribute. I thought if you don't leave it, it's gonna prompt you, but it really doesn't do it, which is weird. Let's come on. Let's head back into my domain controller and see if that machine is there. Uh, let's refresh crossing the fingers crossing the fingers oh awesome that is beautiful so our uh, BJ core or whatever name that you gave your core server is part of the domain and um, one last thing that we need to do is uh, create a local local account user and add it to the to administrative group because again you don't want to use the local account so uh, once that boots up into it uh, we're gonna get started all right, and we back, guys. It finally rebooted. It's part of our domain controller. Awesome. Let's uh, send in Control Alt Delete. I am going to log in locally into my administrative account. So let's log in to this account, and uh, we're gonna get the command prompt. Hey, if you guys have been following me since the beginning, I'm gonna get this annoying little dialog box because again, I'm I'm using the demo version. I haven't fully licensed it yet. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you guys that is part of the 7410 exam is how to create a user account, how to, how to add a user to the group, and then confirm the user account. So to do that, uh, we want to do a net user. Uh, BJ Tech News is the name of the account that I want to add. 
forward slash add and we're doing a star because we don't need anything else and we're gonna hit enter uh, we're gonna add it we're gonna type a password for this guy because uh, I don't want to share my uh, administrative accounts I want people to log into this account right and the next thing is we need to add BJ Tech News to an administrative group right and so the way that we do that is net local group uh, administrator forward slash add and the name of the user and then we hit enter and oh, wait wait a minute what just happened so net local group administrator a specific local group not exists did I spell it right so let's uh, do net local group and see what is the deal oh it's administrators aha spelling is very important there we go right uh, next thing that you want to do you want to confirm that the user account is done so you go BJ tech uh, net user BJ tech news and uh, there we go so that user account is created awesome so uh, what we've done so far is we've done everything within the command prompt right uh, the next part is we're going to actually use a specific tool that Windows Server 2012 core gives you and that's actually called the S config server configuration tool so uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to right click on my virtual machine go to snapshots and I'm gonna revert it back to stable uh, because I wanna revert everything I want to wipe it clean and get back into like the original because I'm going to show you guys how to do everything uh, with the S config GUI okay so stay tuned